This is the eHealth Radio Network, your source for health advice on demand. And now your host, Eric Michaels. Thanks for joining us once again here on the Health Radio Network. This is your host, Eric Michaels. The Health Radio gives you the most current health information, news, and advice featuring some of the leading innovators in healthcare and wellness who are changing healthcare. As we know it, for more Health Radio reports, we invite you to visit our main radio channel site at Health Radio Network. Com. Today on the program, we're speaking with Dr. Megna Dasani, who is a functional and sleep apnea dentist, TEDx speaker, best-selling author, podcaster, and a mother who is passionate about helping children achieve healthy sleep. And Dr. Dasani, thanks for joining us here today. Thank you for having me, Eric. Such a pleasure. Well, the pleasure, certainly all ours, and we really do appreciate your time. I know you stay busy. So for starters, what is good and healthy sleep for those that aren't so clear on that? Healthy sleep has two basic components. We want not just enough hours of sleep, which is what most people think good sleep is. We want to get those seven to eight hours, and it differs for everybody. For children, you know, the younger they are, the more sleep they need. So not only do we want enough hours of sleep, but we want good quality of sleep where we get deep restful sleep instead of having frequent wake-ups. And a lot of times these wake-ups are not ones that we actually remember waking up. It's what I call micro arousals, where your brain senses a dip in oxygen and tries to wake you up to make sure you're okay. And that breaks um, the length of time that you are in that deep sleep. So when we don't have both of these components tie in, that's when we don't have the healthy sleep, which we want both of these components. Certainly appreciate your expertise here and also for giving us a good definition of what good and healthy sleep is. Now, how does one effectively assess the seriousness of a tongue tie? Talk to us about that. So a tongue tie has long reaching consequences. You know, it's in an infant, it It could be something where the baby is unable to nurse. In toddlers and such, it could could show up as speech issues. A child that is unable to pronounce certain um, consonants or unable to have that clarity of speech, it could also be someone that's a picky eater. In adults, it manifests differently. Is it allowing your tongue to fall back into the throat instead of resting up in the roof of the mouth? The best way to assess the tongue tie, whether a patient has a tie or not, is to make sure they're seeing a provider, and it could be a dentist, it could be an ENT, a pediatrician, a myofunctional therapist, that knows what to look for when we're evaluating and assessing it. Commonly, I find the misconception is, you know, we'll have certain docs that'll say, stick your tongue out, and if you can stick your tongue out, they assume it's fine. Well, we want to make sure there is range of motion and that the tongue is able to rest up in the roof of the mouth. Ideal oral resting posture is lips together, we're breathing through the nose, and the tongue is resting passively in the roof of the mouth. I certainly appreciate information there. Now, here's a serious question. What are some of the long-term effects of sleep loss on the health of children? Get into that if you would. There's so many ways that, you know, lack of quality sleep impacts our kids. Um, Long term, we're looking at kids that are at a risk for behavior issues. Um, They are potentially possibly facing concern um, diagnoses of ADD or ADHD. The signs and symptoms of a child that is sleep deprived are the exact same. And unless that sleep is assessed and evaluated, we could potentially be looking at, hey, are we missing one for the other? This is a child that is constantly tired. They are struggling in school. IQ is being impacted. Social development is being impacted. This is a child that is unable to have good social, healthy social interactions with their peers just because they're constantly exhausted. This is a child that is more prone to health conditions. You know, we're seeing more and more instances of um, hypertension in children just because the heart has to work so hard. Um, Cardiac issues as well. Untreated sleep apnea, even in children, can lead to cardiac issues. So there's so many far-reaching consequences in 
how lack of healthy sleep can impact our children. Sleep is when uh, the neurotransmitters in our brain get topped off, get replenished. Now, the transmitters such as leptin and ghrelin, which are our hunger and satiety hormones, if those don't get topped off, what happens? The child loses that that message to the brain, which tells them, I'm full, I don't need, like, I don't need any more food. This now is a child that tends to reach for unhealthy foods, can't really stop when they need to, just because the brain is consist is just constantly tired, the body's tired. In all of this, just if left untreated, we have to remember this is what our children are carrying into adulthood. And we have constantly exhausted children. Yeah, for sure on that. And again, we really appreciate what you do and for joining us here today to talk about this today. We're speaking with Dr. Meghna Dasani, who is a functional and sleep apnea dentist here on E-Health Radio's Sleep Health Channel, a part of the E-Health Radio Network. Now, what is oral appliance therapy? Get into that. I'm sure listeners need to hear about this. When we consider treatment options for sleep apnea, um, the CPAP is considered the gold standard. You know, that is the machine with the hose, the mask, um, and that basically blows air into you, making sure you are breathing. It keeps your airway open. That being said, um, there are a lot of folks that are unable to use the CPAP. They choose not to use it. They're unable to tolerate it, um, whatever the reason might be. The masks don't fit as well, whatever that may be. In which case, an oral appliance is a FDA approved option, alternative treatment for adults that have mild or moderate sleep apnea. In children, the concern with CPAPs is yes, if they have severe enough sleep apnea, we wanna make sure they're breathing, but are we potentially restricting growth patterns? So for children, the appliance therapy as a modality, as a treatment modality is aimed towards growing their airways. We're expanding the arches, we are making room, we are directing growth for the airway. So the child, we, we're impacting growth. We're hoping to take them into adulthood with a more ideal airway. Now for adults that have missed that opportunity, An oral appliance is a perfectly acceptable solution because that is going to help prevent their jaw from falling back. It's going to keep all of that tissue out of the way, and it's going to have an open and patent airway, which means that when an adult falls asleep and they have an oral appliance that is helping keep that airway open, they're able to breathe at night. Not only are they not snoring, but their brain, their body is getting enough oxygen which is what we need. That's all our brain truly asks for, does it not? Give me enough oxygen so I can do what I need to do to help the rest of the body grow and nourish. Now, I'm sure listeners are curious, and I am as well, why are dentists quickly becoming the easiest to access pediatric sleep medicine providers? I've been seeing a lot of this here over the last couple of years. Think about it. Your child or any child typically only sees other healthcare providers, be it their pediatrician, be it their ENT or whoever else, only when they're sick. A healthy child will typically see their healthcare provider once a year for their well child check. Anybody, even kids, typically see the dentist at least two times a year. You, know, you come in, get your cleaning done, have the regular checkups, And so they're seeing us more often. This allows us to stay on top of and actually monitor growth and development patterns that may be happening in the head, face, and neck area, which is where our airway begins. This is also the part of their body that we as dentists are able to control and direct growth if needed. If I can get in and address a condition before it becomes too much of a problem, if I can be proactive and preventative, I'd rather do that than have to wait until it really becomes a problem. So there's so many reasons why, and sometimes it may not be the dentist that needs to do anything, but because we've identified something, we're now then able to refer out to our medical colleagues and say, hey, there's a problem, I see this. How can we help this child? 
Dr. Dasani, really appreciate your visit with us here today. And again, for this fantastic information shared, I'm sure listeners also are as appreciative. Before you go into conclusion, any closing thoughts, a final word or a tip for the listeners here today? For parents that are struggling with um, seeking, that are seeking answers and struggling to find the answers for your child, um, the one thing I would say is as a parent, nobody knows your child better than you do. So if something, if your gut instinct is telling you there's something going on with your child's sleep, ask. And if you're not happy or convinced with an answer that you get, get a second opinion. There's always an answer. There's always something that can be done. So listen to your gut. Make sure your child is sleeping. Your child is getting the rest they need. Um, Snoring is not normal. Mouth breathing is not normal. A tongue tie is not normal. No, we don't outgrow this. So keep pushing for answers. There always is a solution. Great advice. Keep pressing and moving forward to get the answers that you need. And again, we really do appreciate your visit with us here today. If listeners wanted to get more information on yourself, where's the best place to do so? Um, My website is MegnaDasani.com. I am also very active on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Healthy Sleep Revolution. Um, Those are truly the best places to um, get information about me, about the practice, Uh, reach out with questions. I personally answer all of those. And uh, I have a fabulous team that is dedicated as much as I am into helping people get the sleep that they need. And of course, listeners, as always, we'll leave these links within the show notes of this broadcast here on eHealth Radio. Again, Dr. Dasani, all the best, and hopefully we'll be able to speak again in the future right here on eHealth Radio. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. It certainly was my pleasure. Anytime, again, we've been speaking with Dr. Megna Dasani, who is a functional and sleep apnea dentist, TEDx speaker, best-selling author, podcaster, and a mother who is passionate about helping children achieve healthy sleep. And for all the details, visit MegnaDasani.com. And this is Eric Michaels, and we do thank you for your continued support of the eHealth Radio Network. Join us again soon for another episode that will help further expand your knowledge on those things that are important to your health and wellness. For more eHealth Radio reports, we invite you to visit our main radio channel site at eHealthRadioNetwork.com. And as always, we do thank you for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to the eHealth Radio Network. For more information or to subscribe to this podcast, visit eHealthRadioNetwork.com.